Why do I fish? I'm not sure I had a choice. My dad was fishing at a bass tournament on the morning I was born. He claims he had permission to go, but my mother doesn't really remember the facts matching that story. And the fact that he won a nice Shakespeare reel did nothing to mitigate the trouble he was in when he returned. Fishing just runs in the family. In fact, I remember my mother complaining when she was looking at a photo album and saying, do we have any pictures of our family without a fish? So, I fish because I live. So yesterday we drove, I think what ended up being 10 and a half or 11 hours all the way from Tampa in Florida to here in North Carolina. We're currently in Wilmington area. Uh, stayed in Carolina Beach State Park last night. It was hot and humid in the tent, very hot and humid. Um, and we couldn't really open the flaps because it was raining. So um, definitely woke up pretty sweaty this morning. <laughs> um, unpacked the tent real quick, got the Jeep all ready to go. It's 7.05 right now. We're going to meet Steve Moore, I think about 15 minutes away, so not too far away. We're going to grab some water from the gas station because definitely lost a lot last night. Um, and the plan today is to kayak the intercoastal waterway and do some red fishing. Like How are you guys? I feel like I know you guys. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's been excited to finally meet you. Good to see you. How are you, Alex? Nice All to meet right. you. Let me give you your Jacob. Pass. Nice to meet Jake, you, Dick. Alex. Dick. So we may as well head on down, and then we can do some of the gags and stuff. Awesome. Down there. Yeah, sounds good. I drove right past you, and I'm like, wait a second. There were two kayaks, two guys. That's got to be them. Yeah. <laughs> I will say the Jeep is super heavy right now. <laughs> We got a lot of weight. Sergeant Major, what do you think about these guys? We haven't fished with them before. How do we know that they're going to be squared away and ready to go? They look like ragtag anglers. I think we need to inspect them. Okay. Let's follow them in for inspection then, Sergeant Major. Okay. Hey, over here for inspection. Okay. On the ground. Heels together. Sir, I think the angler is ready for inspection. Roger that, Sergeant Major. Acceptable. You're ready to go. Thank you, sir. Jacob, here in North Carolina, it's a law, it's an absolute law that you have to woo when you catch a redfish, and maybe even a flounder. And it's against the law to woo if you catch a stingray or a croaker or something like that. So I got to make sure your woo is good enough because if the wildlife guys are here, they're going to write you a ticket if they see you with a redfish and yeah. no woo. So the way you do it is it's got to start down here in your gut. You breathe in, you tense your stomach, you grab your fist, and then you go, woo! And that's what you gotta do when you do a redfish. So let's see your woo. Woo! That's pretty weak woo. Try it again. Oh man, this is tough. I'm out of breath. Let's see here. Suck it in. Suck tense it your in. stomach. Tense your fist. Let's go fishing! Awesome.
There's a redfish! <laughs> that would be good for a ticket here in North Carolina. A false blue. A false blue. I had to get you first. Probably the biggest tip for catching a redfish when you're fishing shorelines like this is look for anything that's irregular. Unless the tide is moving in and out and you know the redfish are going to be running right along the shoreline, they're going to hang in the little nooks and crannies in the coves where when the bait fish comes by they can go out, slam into them, and get them. So points and things like that, just like with any fish, good for redfish as well. What do we got? It's not a redfish, that's for sure. It's a black drum! Whoa! Spade! Spadefish, new species for me and for the tour. I've never seen one of these in person. Like, out of an aquarium. He caught something. What's going through your head right now? Uh, right now, I feel like we should be catching a lot of fish. This is a good spot. Looks really good. We've seen a lot of activity. Um, probably going to start switching things up pretty good here soon. Because they're obviously here. We just got to find out what they're wanting. Getting thumpered, dog. You're getting thumpered. Get it, get it, get it. I got it. Oh, 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 oh. You need a circle hook. It's all. Sometimes it's hard to find your way back when everything looks the same as you can see here. But I got the angle wrap and I can just follow my track back to get back through the channel pass. Oh wait, no, big toad. Toad. Oh God, that's a massive, that's a massive one. I've never seen a toad fish that big. That thing is gnarly. Look at that. You bring that over here, I wanna get that up close. They have venomous barbs? <laughs> I've had two great benefits out of fishing. The first is, it's kept me young and in reasonable shape. I love hiking in the mountains on small brookie streams, and of course, here on the inshore side, I'm in my kayak a couple times a week, and that is always a great workout, especially when you have to work against the tide and the wind. The other thing is, I've been married for 42 years, and I think my wife appreciates the fact that I'm out fishing and not bothering her. fished out our first spot which was along the rocks here. Um, there's only been one fish, two fish caught now, a spade fish and some toad fish or something along those lines. Uh, we expected the tide to be done moving by now and flipping but as you can see it's still moving in the same direction that it was so we're gonna keep drifting down this rock line, try and get a few more fish out of here and then continue drifting our grass flats back to the uh, launch area. Third species of the day. Just reeled this up and I had a, this is what's been stealing our bait all day. So if Alex, Alex is gonna open up my live well hatch in that kayak and I'm gonna drop him in there for bait later. Mm. So where we wanna start fishing is up there at that point. There's a deep channel that moves around that point and uh, that's where the, the fish tend to be at low tide. Jacob's caught a couple fish so far. Dick had a huge stingray on, but I've got nothing. It's kind of like the skunk is with me, and I don't understand it. This is a great spot right here. Um, we're basically fishing for targeting reds, but what we're throwing is more like a... Uh, you end up getting more of the, the trash fish trifecta spectacle when you throw shrimp on a line. That's just how it goes. So that's why I'm working this paddle tail too, because this is a more pure redfish and trout bait where the shrimp touches just anything. Oh, yeah. yep. Big fish on. Oh, God. Dude, look at it. <laughs> Big fish!
this fish is just still dogging. It's a, probably the heaviest fish I've ever, definitely the heaviest fish I've ever caught on a kayak. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame you. This thing's pretty spooky, but I'd like to try. Let's see if I can get up and over. Yeah. He was not moving. Hey! You get it? Hooks out. All righty. Ah. Look at that. Big old sting. Is there a way to hold them? <laughs> not really. Can you lip? Can you go up under their their ear? I, or, I don't. I don't mess with them at all because what happened to Steve Earl? Yeah. Look at that. We're gonna flip him over. Get him on his way. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good. There we go, little guy. Oh, coming up over your kayak. Heads up. Oh, perfect bait size. All right. So now we're gonna do with this guy. I love this process in salt water. It's so easy. Catch a fish, you get a bigger hook, and then you put the fish you just caught on the bigger hook. Got him on the big rod. The weight's not too heavy, so he can still swim around, but you just can't control where he's swimming. Just flick him out there without casting him off. Like that. I don't know what it is. I just can't catch fish today. You know, Jacob didn't catch much today. He only got that one big stingray. Good fight, but I feel like we owe him something. How about that special lure you got from uh, Army Survival? Army Survival School? You mean this one? Yeah, that one. But, you know, uh, what do you think? I mean, it's It green. works well, but it's the wrong color. It should be black. Black for today? Yeah. Well, even though it's the wrong color, I think we ought to go ahead and give it to him anyway, because He's still got 15 days on the tour, and he might need it. I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. There you go. So we just got off the water here uh, with Steve and Dick. They showed us around some pretty awesome little uh, intercoastal flats here. We fished out on the outgoing tide, fished on the incoming tide. Ended up having the biggest fight that I've ever had from a kayak. So I'd say successful day, even though we didn't get our redfish that we were hoping for. Uh, what are your thoughts on the day? Well, I just think that you guys have it so easy now that they have all this great technology for fishing, like the angler app. When I was growing up, we couldn't even afford bait. We'd have to cut off parts of our body to use for bait. You don't even want to see what my toes look like. In fact, I think my generation is much tougher than you guys. I don't know, we're pretty tough too. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>